Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about find the average rate of change of a function. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So average rate of change. That is basically a product or function, whatever it is, over a set time period, how much it average, it fluctuates. So like, say you're driving your car, right? And it takes you, I don't know, 60 minutes, right? Uh, 60 minutes, one hour, right? To go 60 miles. At some point you accelerated, you went faster, you went slower, but it took you 60 minutes to do the full trip. So your average rate of change was 60 miles per hour. But we know, like I said in the beginning, you started out on no speed, really, and then you accelerated. At some point, you had to go above and then below, et cetera. So that's like that average rate of change. The official definition of rate of change. The rate of change describes how an output quantity changes relative to the change in the input quantity. The units on a rate of change are output units per input units. The average rate of change between two input values is the total change of the function values, output values, divided by the change in the input values. So we have delta y over delta x, it's a little triangle, is equal to f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, and that f of x2 is like your y2, So, and that f of x1 is like your y1. So the change in the output over the change of the input. Okay. All right. So let's dive into an example here. Number one. And we're going to use this table. And we want to find the average rate of change of the price of gasoline between 2007 and 2009. So we're looking from 2007 to 2009. Okay. So what is the average rate of change there? Well, in 2007, what's the price of gasoline? So in 2007, the price of gasoline says it is $2.84. In 2009, the price or the cost of gasoline was $2.41. So if we want to find the average rate of change here, all right, that's our delta Y over our delta X. So the change in Y, the Y2 minus Y1, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, all right? Well, our y2 is 241, the output, the cost, $2.41, minus 2007, the y1, which is $2.84, over 2009, the change in years, so it's 2009, minus 2007, and what does that come out to be? Well, <clears throat> there we have the numerator is a negative 43 cents, oops, 43 cents, over two years, right, two years. So that's 2009 minus 77. And so our dividing that 43 divided by two, or 0.43 divided by two is a negative 0 0.22 or 22 cents per year. So between 2007 and 2009, our average rate of change was a minus 22 cents per year, and that's for the gallon of gas. All right. So let's go dive into another example. Let me erase this. All right. So number two here, we're computing average rate of change from a graph. So we're given our function g of t right here, and we're going to find the average rate of change on the interval from negative 1 to 2. So we have our graph g of t, and we want to find the average rate of change over that interval from negative 1 to 2. So what, what do we have to find? Well, what is the value? So if t is negative 1, what is g of negative 1, right? So we look at our graph right here, and we say, okay, at t is negative 1, what is g of t, and that is a 4, we see the point there of 4. So now we're going to do the same thing with t of 2, the second part in the interval. When t is 2, what is g of 2, all right? So we look at our graph, we say, okay, when t is 2, our output value is a 1, so g of 2 is 1 here, okay? All right, 
So now we have to use our rate of change there. So our delta y over delta x, or sorry, our delta, really delta uh, g of t over the delta of just t. Okay, well, what is that equal here? Well, delta g of t is the outputs, so we have, well, 1 minus, minus 4, so g2, 1 minus 4, so the second out, uh, output, second input, or second, first output, <laughs> second output, so 1 minus 4 over the inputs, which was 2 minus and minus 1. That gives us a negative 3 in the numerator and a positive 3 in the denominator. Okay, so that comes out to be a negative one right there. So our average rate of change is negative one, and we can see that in our graph, right? You can see that line that shows the average rate of change in orange connecting the two points, and that line actually has a slope of negative one. A little tie in right there. So that is our average rate of change there seen on the graph. All right, let me go erase this and we'll do another one. Okay, so number three here, computing the average rate of change from a table. So we're given this problem here. After picking up a friend who lives 10 miles away and leaving on a trip, Anna records her distance from home over time. The values are shown in this table. Find her average speed over the first six hours. Okay, so we're going to find her speed over the first six hours. So what is that? Well, we have to use our table here. They give us time. She drove for seven hours here, right? And the distance in miles is given down below. So, what we want to do now is we find, again, the change in y of the change in x. The delta dt over the delta of just time. So, we look at the, the output, right? So, or well, the input might be easier to first see. So we were at six hours total minus the starting point was at zero hours, right? The first six hours we'd want to find. Now the output, the y value is there. At six, we have 292. In the input, she's at 10 miles there, okay? So now we want to use that information. We have 282 in the numerator, 292 minus 10, and six minus zero is six. So 282 divided by 6 is 47. So what does that number tell us in this problem? Well, her average speed is 47 miles per hour. Okay? Or you can write it out miles per hour, but I think you all know what MPH is. So her average speed there is 47 miles per hour. Okay? All right. So now I'm going to go erase this and we'll dive into the next Okay, we want to find the average rate of change of this function, so we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 over x on the interval from 2 to 4. All right. So what do we want to do? Well, we need to find, we already have the input values, 2 and 4. We want to find the output. So we have to find f of 2 and f of 4. So f of 2 is plug 2 in for x, so 2 squared minus 1 over 2. And you put parentheses there if you want to. Well, 2 squared is 4 minus 1 half, and we're left with, well, 4 minus 1 half. Keep it in fraction if you want, is 7 halves. Okay? Or 3.5. Okay, f of 4, we're going to find the other output value here. So we have 4 squared minus 1 over 4. 4 squared is 16 minus 1 fourth. Keep going with fractions, that's 63 over 4. Okay, quick math there for you. So now we want to find the average rate of change. And what does that equal? Well, that's our f of 4 minus f of 2 over 4 minus 2, right? Change in y over change of x. And so that's 63 over 4 minus 7 halves, okay, over 4 minus 2, I got. Simplifying that out, okay? 
Not really going over fractions here, but 63 over 4 minus 7 halves is 49 over 4. And then 4 minus 2 is 2. Keep that going. And this simplifies to be 49 over 8. So the average rate of change over our interval from 2 to 4 here of our function is 49 over 8. Okay? All right. So let's go do another problem just like this, number 5. Okay. And the 5 is finding the average rate of change of a force. The electrostatic force F measured in newtons between two charged particles can be related to the distance between the particles D in centimeters by the formula F of D equals 2 over D squared. Find the average rate of change of force if the distance between the particles is increased from 2 centimeters to 6 centimeters. Okay. So the few things they tell us here, they tell us here that our, um, our force, f of d, is 2 over d squared, and it's on the interval 2 to 6. So that's really all the key information we needed to get from that problem. All right, so now we want to find the average rate of change here. So just like before, we have the average rate of change. And what is that equal to? Well, that's f of 6, the change in y, f of 2, over the change of x, okay, which is 6 minus 2. Okay, keep that going. So f of 6, our function is here. We can kind of put it all together. You can find the values individually if you want, but we can put it as part of the whole function. f of 6 is plugging 6 into our function. So we have 2 over 6 squared here, uh, minus f of 2, 2 over 2 squared, all over 6 minus 2. Okay? Well, let's simplify it. That's 2 over 36 minus 2 over 4 over, well, 6 minus 2. Well, let's just, let me put that now as 4. Keep this thing going. This simplifies 2 over 36 minus 2 fourths is negative 16 over 36. We're dividing that by 4 here. And negative 16 over 36 divided by 4, that simplifies to be a negative 1 ninth. Okay? So our average rate of change is negative 1 ninth Newton per centimeter. Okay? And that's the units right there. Okay? All right. Let me erase this and we'll get into our last example. All right, so number six, we're finding the average rate of change as an expression. We want to find the average rate, rate of change of g of t, which is equal to t squared plus 3t plus 1 on our interval, this is tricky, on the interval. How do you think it's going to be tricky? From 0 to a. So we're not given a specific number at the end, but we can find the average rate of change from 0 to a, and this is definitely going to be helpful in your mathematical journey. So what's our average rate of change? Okay, well, that's change in y over change of x, so g of a minus g of 0, so y2 minus y1, over x2, which is a, minus x1, which is 0. So same process, remember a is and zero is a little different. So that's what we have to do. So we plug a in for t, right, in our function g of a, which is a squared plus 3a plus 1 minus, put a little parenthesis here to kind of help you out. I think it's been doing both parts. And put zero in for t. Zero squared plus 3 times 0 plus 1. All over a minus 0. Okay? So what can we simplify, okay? Well, looking at this here, don't really have to worry about 0 squared and 3 times 0. That's just going to be 0. So what we have is, well, a squared plus 3a, and then plus 1, and then subtracting that 1, we're distributing that. We have minus 1 there, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So we don't want to write that either. And we have a minus 0 in the denominator, which is just a. Well, this can kind of factor out the a in the numerator. So we have a times a plus 3 over a 
hopefully see the a's cancel, and what are we left with? Just a plus 3. So the average rate of change between 0 and a of this function is just a plus 3. So how is this actually beneficial? Well, if you want to take the average rate of change of this function from 0 to 1, once we have this thing, a is 1, plug it in, the answer is going to be 4. If we go from 0 to 5, let's say, average rate of change, plug 5 in for a, and our average rate of change would be 5 plus 3, which is 8. So this is where this actually becomes beneficial by keeping using variables here. We can find the average rate of change from 0 to another variable, and actually you can do this with not just 0, but other, <coughs> other values there. Okay. All right, so I hope you learned something here on finding the average rate of change. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com